In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at five new features in the 2025.11 update. Check it out. So we're here with the November release, which is the penultimate update for this year. And as updates go, this one definitely doesn't disappoint. We've got new integrations, lots of new quality of life improvements, and plenty of new UI changes. So let's kick this off with my first new feature, which isn't the lack of my facial hair, but it is in fact a brand new change to the Automation Editor UI. Over the last few releases, the Automation Editor's received a lot of love. We've had lots of big UI changes like the new split view, new dialogues, new icons, and overall it's just become a lot easier to use and much easier to actually navigate. And in this release, that's all been continued on with some great new changes to the UI. The new changes that we've received in this update are some brand new changes to the section dialogues. So now when you choose to add a trigger, a condition or an action, you'll be greeted with this much larger dialogue that features this new two pane view. The first pane is going to contain all of the actions that you know and love, and the second pane is going to contain all of the building blocks. All of this packed into that bigger dialogue just makes everything much more visual, it's really easy to actually see things, and you've also still got that search, so if you can't see something in this big new dialogue, you can just search for it. If we're staying on the topic of the UI then, we've got my second new feature, and this one is a brand new target picker. Previously, whenever using the target picker, it wasn't always clear where your entities were coming from or what exactly would be affected, especially if you picked an entire area. It could also be a bit of a guessing game trying to figure out which devices or entities were tied to what. In this release though, that's now all been fixed with the introduction of this new picker. Using the new picker, it now clearly shows context like which device or area an entity belongs to, along with these handy little indicators such as the entity counts. You can even expand an additional dialogue to see exactly where an entity comes from, and this one's definitely a much needed improvement that just makes everything a lot clearer and a lot more intuitive. I also think that this particular feature will also increase the amount that people use areas because you can now confidently use them because you know how many things will be changing and it won't just be a little guess and hope for the best. Up next we've got another UI based change and this one's a brand new visualisation for the energy dashboard. If you make use of the energy dashboard you'll now see this new icon in the top right of your energy graphs. Selecting this little icon will change the graph into a little donut chart and this one's just a nice visual representation of that data. Whenever you select the little button, you'll also get this little animation where it blurs between the two graphs and you can switch between them as you like. Although this particular visualization doesn't give you any additional information, it is nice to have more representations of the graphs and it is cool that we actually have more now. So in the future, I would like to see more of this. And also I'd like to know, what do you call this particular graph? Is it a pie chart or is it a donut chart? Let me know in the comments below. Carrying on then with my fourth feature and we've got the Thing integration. If you're a Thing user and you make use of either the Thing desktop, the Thing agent or the much older Thing box, you can now also leverage the local API. Using the local API you can set up the new Thing integration and this is going to give you access to information about devices on your network and also any people that you've got tracked within Thing. Wrapping this up then with my fifth and final feature and we've got naming your entities on your dashboard. You can now choose how you want your names to be displayed on your cards. So in your customization, you can now choose whether you want the entity, the device, the area, the floor, or even just a combination of all of them. You've got full customization here, so you can just pick and choose from those available options. Or if you didn't want to use any of them, then you don't have to. You could also just set your own customized name and just use that. One of the cool things about these selections is that they'll dynamically update, so if you change an entity's area or change any of the other properties, you'll see these reflected automatically in the names. This one is just a really small change, but it's nice that you can now include that content, and it's nice that it will automatically update, so go wild and just combine them into your dashboards. But there we go guys, that's been a quick look at five new features that I've really liked in this update. If there's a particular feature that I haven't covered that you really like, then let me know what it is in the comments below. And while you're down there, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to drop me a like and hit that subscribe button if you aren't already. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you are interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me, all in the description below. Thank you for watching and maybe I'll see you with a moustache next time. Cheers.